St. Paul is probably the greatest Christian theologian of all time. And with me today is Professor Richard Bell, and he is going to examine the question, why study the death of the Son of God in St. Paul? Mm. Richard, you're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Tom. Well, where do we start? I suppose you have to say that St. Paul was actually overwhelmed by the fact that he believed that Jesus Christ had died for him. It's very, very interesting. You look in his letters, there's one or two allusions to the teaching of Jesus, perhaps one or two scattered quotations from Jesus, but a lot of the letters is about the death of Christ. And this is the thing, as I say, that, was over, that, that overwhelmed him. The question is, how did he interpret this? And I suppose the central point here is that he saw Christ's death as a sacrifice for sin, a sacrifice for the sinner. And he seemed to understand this in the light of the book of Leviticus. So perhaps I can just say something about the book of Leviticus and how the sin offering would, uh, would operate. So the, the Hebrew for sin offering is chatat. The Greek is usually perihamatias. And in the sin offering, uh, the Israelite would bring uh, an animal to be sacrificed. Uh, a hand would be placed on the head of the animal. The animal would be killed. And then the next stage is absolutely crucial. The blood of the animal would be taken into a holy place. So the blood could be smeared on the horns of the altar or it could be sprinkled on what's called the mercy seat which was in the Holy of Holies. And the way in which this uh, atonement, the, the sacrifice of atonement would function then, is that the Israelite would be identified with the animal. The animal's death was then the Israelite's death. And then when the blood was taken into the holy place, the Israelite would have fellowship with God. So the sacrifice functioned in an entirely positive way. You go through a death into fellowship with God. Now, Paul develops this in a very interesting way, and in Romans 8, 3, he talks about Jesus Christ being sent as this sin offering. Now, the laying on of hands you find in the Old Testament, well, for Paul, this is, is essentially faith in Christ. So through faith in Christ, we are identified with Christ. When Christ dies, therefore, we also die. And you could extend this to say that when Christ rises again, we also participate in this resurrection. So this is the way in which Paul understands atonement. And what is very, very interesting is that Paul sometimes talks about the new creation. So in 2 Corinthians 5.17, he says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, the old has passed away, the new has come. Now, when sometimes people read that, they think, well, if you're in Christ, you're sort of a nice person, you're kind to animals, you help old ladies across the street and that sort of thing. But Paul is actually getting at something much more profound, I think. And he's saying that if you're in Christ, there is an ontological change. Your being actually changes. And so this means that the miracle of the new creation is an integral part of the atonement. And so atonement means one dies with Christ, one rises to new life, and one is therefore a new creation. Now, what I've been presenting here is uh, very much based on some work which has been done in the University of Tübingen. So there was an Old Testament scholar called Hartmut Geyser, that's G-E-S-E, -E, and this was developed by a number of New Testament scholars as well. So my own supervisor, Peter Stuhlmacher, he developed this, and somebody called Ottfried Hofius and others. And it's really a very, very satisfying way, I think, of bringing these many aspects of Paul's theology together. And you can even bring the idea of baptism and Eucharist into the doctrine of the atonement. So in baptism, we have this idea that we are buried with Christ. So this is the idea you get in Romans chapter 6. We rise to new life with him as well. In the Eucharist, in 1 Corinthians 10, Paul talks about the Eucharist as being a participation in Christ. And so this is basically how, how Paul understands the death of Christ and why it's so absolutely fundamental for him. And another way of looking at the death of Christ is from the perspective of 
um, justification by faith. So in justification by faith, you have this idea that if one believes in Christ, God declares you to be not guilty. So justification by faith, so to speak, is another way of approaching this. Uh, now, the other thing about the death of Christ is that Paul felt it had not just a significance for the salvation of the individual, but also that in some ways the Christian can actually participate in this death. So Paul talks about this quite a lot in things like in passages in 2 Corinthians and so on. He almost has this view of like a Christ mysticism that Paul somehow, when he suffers as an apostle, is in a way participating in the sufferings of Christ. And yes. And can you, if you were to try, you've used words like atonement, sacrifice. These are words which are thrown around but we tend to have, we tend, sacrifice tends to capture images of the knife. Mm. And sacrifice is something negative. It's almost something that's forced. An awful thing happens. Oh, well, you can, mm. you can, you can look on the bright side. It's a sacrifice. Yeah. Can you bring out this positive, because the notion of the, of the, 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 the kipper, the, 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 mm. the, the smearing, mm. Uh, can you bring out the, the, the positive, because as long as we're using the sort of imagery, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I, I remember talking to a group once and I asked them to about what does the word sacrifice meant. And I found that a, the, the following next time we met, someone brought in a picture of, of a, a human sacrifice, an Aztec human sacrifice. And everyone said, yeah, that's what sacrifice mm. meant, which was really just slaughter. Mm. I wonder, could you tease that, that out? You, you said it's a wholly positive notion, but could you just tease that out a bit okay. more? Okay, well, first of all, when people think about the sacrifice of Christ, often they simply think about the death of Christ. So, in fact, if you take the view of penal substitution, mm -hmm. this is something often uh, you find it in uh, evangelical theology. And you do actually find it in the scripture as well. So you find it in Isaiah 53, you find it in 1 Peter. And the idea there is that we are sinners, Christ dies in our place, um, and that's the end of it. And so, according to this theory, sacrifice is seen actually as a rather negative thing. Everything is focused on the death. And it's very, very interesting that many years ago an evangelistic tract was written using this theory of penal, penal substitution and it failed to mention the resurrection. Ah, right. Yeah, because you simply didn't, because according to the logic of this, you didn't need the, the resurrection. resurrection. The resurrection was almost icing on the cake. That, that, that's icing on yeah. the cake, that's right. And I suppose the nice thing of looking at sacrifice through the sin offering is that you actually, uh, well, in the case of the Old Testament, you have this idea of fellowship with God yes. is the goal of it. So the goal is not the death of the animal. Mm. The crucial thing, in a way, is the blood rites, which many people actually yeah. you know, can't deal with. So the blood rites ending in the fellowship with God. And so in the case of the death of Christ is actually incorporating the resurrection with that as well. So that is the positive. So and just one further thing, Tom. Uh, you know, Paul says in um, uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 19, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. So it's not as though it's a human being who is dying for us. It's actually God himself is dying for us. So I, I would go as far as to say that on Good Friday, God died. Well, the other, I would just want to make the point that in the, the, in the Leviticus sin offering is, of course, it's the beginning of a new year as well. And so it's all it's it's yes. it's it's finishing one year, but it's also announcing the start of a new year, and so I I see yeah. that that linkage in in the yeah. sense of between the death and the resurrection yeah. of the new year. Yeah, that's right. You get that of course in Leviticus sixteen, but if, if you go back to Leviticus four, you have a sin offering which is also offered on a, on another on, on another occasion. So just really to sum up on this. I think the great message from uh, Leviticus and St. Paul is that we are sinners. This is part of our makeup. It's an ontological problem. And the only way to deal with this ontological problem is through a death 
and through a resurrection. So you cannot separate a sinner from his sins. To separate a sinner from his sins is to separate him from himself. One has to go a death, but also a resurrection. Richard, thank you very much. Thank you, Tom.